Greetings everyone, my name is Napoleon Complex, I go by Ludendorff from the Southern Forums and welcome back to Field of Glory 2. Today I will be playing the Macedonian side of the Field of Glory Digital League, no not the Field of Glory Digital League, sorry, the Slytherin 20th Anniversary Tournament and let's begin. So to explain the rules of this tournament again, just in case you didn't catch it on the other side of this mirror, it's not just about winning this time. I have to try to win by the largest margin possible and the largest, the person who can win the most battles by the largest margin possible will win the most points and win the league. So I believe you get a bounty of points for winning the battle but you also gain points based on what the percentage difference was over your opponent. So let's consider that. Now, now taking a look at the armies, a brief look at the armies, I may do a more thorough rundown of them in a separate video. My army cannot field the same number of expensive units that the Spartan one can. Well, sorry, we can't, I can't field as many units as the Spartan one can. However, my phalanxes, are like the veteran pike phalanx or even just the pike phalanx, will be a hard counter to just about anything these hoplites can throw at us. I also have superior cavalry and I even have some elephants on offer, though against these this number of offensive spears, I believe the elephants will be a wasted investment. I also have some light javelin horse and a fair selection of skirmishers, though that's far from the strongest part of my army. Most useful are these Yuzonoi, who are capable of shredding other skirmishers in melee combat thanks to their swords and 50% capabilities. Uh, and that may make them an interesting buy. They are also quite well protected, unlike most skirmishers who are only unprotected or lightly protected. Seems unprotected is the case for the standard skirmishers. Fair number of mediums as well, which may mean I can gain an advantage on the rough ground. Particularly of interest are these Thorakitai spearmen, and this may allow me to drive over the rough ground and win an advantage here, whereas heavy troops cannot tread. So a mixture of phalangites in the centre and Thorakitai in the middle may be, of the, may be a desirable option. On that note, I can't talk and think at the same time, so I will be back once I uh, finalise my army selection. So let me go over my strategy first. Now I expect my opponent to drop with probably veteran hoplites here to defend this gap, medium foot here, medium foot here, and then a swarm of dangerous hoplites and cavalry over here. I expect to be outnumbered in this battle, and so as you can see I have reserved this flank, refused this flank even. So Refusing a flank means that you retreated back from the enemy a little bit in order to make it harder for the opponent to make contact with the more vulnerable side, either somewhere you were outnumbered or somewhere you, where you are outclassed. To make the position even more defensible, I have placed these superior warbands and veteran hoplites, who should really be at the back. Um, Here. Now these are impact foot, so anyone who tries to charge these units to get in at the vulnerable mercenary hoplites will probably find that they bounce back and or get disrupted. So these superior warbands are here as a strong deterrent for anyone who wants to try and shatter this side of my army suddenly. The cavalry here are an extra deterrent. Anyone who manages to get around the flank of these veteran hoplites will suddenly find that they have Zeister Foroi to deal with. And Lancers are very good at holding up multiple units of heavy infantry who are attempting to get round the flank to some key position. So their role isn't really to defeat the enemy cavalry, which they can certainly do, but more to hold any flanking infantry in place, although they can certainly work to intercept any enemy cavalry. My light javelin horse over here will also have, the have a similar role. Their job is to intercept enemy cavalry by charging into the backs and forcing them to turn around. And my armoured cavalry are just an extra a cheap component of a delaying action. The real meat of my strategy, however, falls to the pike phalanx. Now, as you can see, I've arranged my general's bodyguard so that the generals can either go to help the mediums or they can reinforce the pike phalanx. And these units will have the task of shattering the front line of the enemy's defenders here. They will push the veteran hoplites back, and yes, I am planning to go straight through what I think will be the strongest part of his army. They'll push the veteran hoplites back, 
these three or four I will follow up and then we will encircle any positions on this rough ground, break through and then mop up the enemy army from there, which the mediums will be more than capable of doing even if the rough ground may get in the way of the pike phalanx. To further strengthen my position, I have recruited Thorakitai instead of Thuriophori to take advantage of the fact that my opponent only has Thuriophori. Now, I was the second to deploy in this battle, so if we just hit the end turn, we will see what my opponent has brought. Oh, and I also have these skirmishers for helping to break this position. Hmm, interesting. So not quite what I was expecting, to be honest. A large force of skirmishers here, this could cause me some difficulties. Less than I thought on the rough ground, to be honest. So this could be an opportunity if I can force the rough ground. Uh, the veteran hoplites may be a problem for my superior war bands, but these citizen hoplites will be quite vulnerable. My plan should go relatively unhindered on the r enemy's right. However, I can see myself having a little bit of difficulty. Well, hmm. no, I think we can handle this. These skirmishers may pose a problem, but my Thorakitai's are will help a little bit. I'm a little bit worried about my three or four, and it may be worth keeping them back from the worst of the arrow fire. My opponent's superiority in skirmishers is a worry. So I think the best solution to that is to get on with the job. No, I should take full time to consider this. Give me a moment. Okay, so I have noticed that my opponent is quite thinly spread on the left. If you look at the number of units, he only has th three... 5, 8, 10 units available to him. Now, if you count this unit here as well, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I have 10 as well. But my units are better, I reckon. And so I think that a concentrated assault here will yield results. Especially if I can get my light javelin horse involved with the support as well. So I'm going to bring my cavalry up. And the intention will be to try and get around his left flank and create an opening somewhere. Particularly if I can match my Zeiss to Foroi to his armoured cavalry who are quite vulnerable. Selecting which units to go against which units is going to be important. I think, unfortunately, one of my superior warbands will have to fight some of his veteran hoplites, which is not an advantageous uh, match. I will, however, hopefully be able to get one of my superior warbands into a citizen hoplites, and that is a very advantageous match, as uh, superior warbands with generals will potentially shatter a unit of citizen hoplites. And I hope to use the fact that my troops are impact foot to shatter the offensive spears before the offensive spears can get the upper hand against my own forces. As if that wasn't enough, I hope to use my mercenary hoplites in order to gain an advantage against his own his own one unit of mercenary hoplites. This will hopefully force him to shift reinforcements around, which may allow my theory of four eye to get the upper hand in battle. If I can get this theory of four eye through the gap here, then I may be able to follow up the reinforcements here, just in case the battle here doesn't go well. I am a little bit concerned about pushback being a problem, so I'm a little bit leery of getting my pike phalanx into trouble. I will start to move my skirmishers towards the middle of the battlefield as it is obvious that the skirmish battle is going to appear there. However, I mustn't get too far ahead. As you can see, my battle line is in flux right now and I don't have full formation. So that will continue. I'd like to keep my plan of breaking through the center a secret for the moment. So on to the next turn. Back on the field with Hyde 77. Hmm. So he's not hanging around, he's coming to me. 
Ah, the rough ground could trip him up. Right, I need to hurry up. He's pushing that flank forward. I don't know how that's going to serve him against nine more powerful troops. He's probably hoping to use a skirmishers. Right, I'm going to sprint my cavalry towards the center. Although, the thing is, that, well, they might be able to provide the distraction at least to those who use Onoi. The skirmishers are going to be a problem. And they'll be in range next turn. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about my overall goal of using the uh, of attacking the troops on the right. No real point in doing that, is there? So, one mistake I think my opponent might be making, and obviously I, he, we don't know what's got actually going to happen in this battle yet, is he's letting his troops get into a traffic jam behind uh, where, well, I mean, obviously this can potentially work in his favour if I push through, but the way these mercenary hoplites are, are located, I mean, even with a 3 to 1 advantage, you're going to struggle to beat a pike phalanx from the front with offensive spearmen, uh, though they are veterans, and he does have generals on them. I think I might want to place. Well, when we get closer, I might want to place my general here. But this is not the kind of formation I think you want to encounter a pike phalanx with. But he might expand it and give up some more space as uh, the battle continues. And I also suspect he might be planning to close this gap, although that will make him more vulnerable in the flanks here. Uh, okay, next turn. Or I could remember to move my skirmishers. Let's move across like, well... I kind of like this line. Well, these are heavily armoured Thorakita, so I kind of like them to tank some of the archer fire. Because I don't want them able to move across and hit my skirmish teams. And we are going to need the support for battle line, I think, to win this, as we are quite badly outnumbered. A turn like this. No, like this. We need maximum maneuverability towards the front of the battlefield. If he moves these up unsupported, this is something I can hopefully deal with next turn. So, ah, he's smart. No, he's uh, right. Makes sense that he's targeting the protected unit. Uh, okay, first strike. Luckily, we held firm. So, the good thing about coming under first strike from your opponent is that you do get to counter attack. That rough ground is definitely going to get in his way. Hmm. Right. Oh, okay. So the issue I have here is that I kind of want to start moving my line up now. But the enemy skirmishers are in the way. Well, this takes priority, so. Because we need to get onto that rough ground. Not sure we can delay it for a turn. So he'll be here and then. Not really, we need to get a move on.
place a general and not three or four eye units to avoid it from disrupting and send some reserves in just in case we encounter a situation where they disrupt suddenly. Uh, is there anything I could be doing with this line? Because it's not actually doing that much. Uh, get ready to follow up in the center here. And as for the section of the line here. Right. Now I have ideas for this. That could be a problem. Hopefully the, scar the slingers will just fall back through my units. There is however a chance that they'll only retreat one tile, which would be very painful at this point. Uh, oh right, I put rough troops because I wasn't planning to encounter them at this point. Alright. Um... Well, in that case, the line is going to kink a little bit. I need these, th well, it looks like I'll need these three or four over here. Because this is going to get in the way of my line. However, it could also protect my, due to the way it linked up, it could actually end up protecting my superior warband from his veteran hoplites. Because remember, this is not a confrontation I particularly want to take. And it could anchor the um, mercenary hoplites as well. So I think overall I'll probably be on the defense in this flank. Do I want to bring them in to help with the skirmish? Uh, hmm. Probably not on balance. to bring my cavalry up. Okay, next turn. Back in the tournay field with Hyde, and here we go. Crunch, crunch, held farm. Those easy are not ah, we move there. Smart. Great. Just great. I'll have to pull them back. Getting hampered by my lack of skirmishers here, it's going to force me to be aggressive. And he's now hanging back. Well, where he's being defensive, I have to be aggressive. You idiots. Thank God they didn't pursue any farther. Aha. I was lucky that that worked out for me the way it did. they're facing in the diagonal as well. I don't actually want to invite concentrated fire from his skirmishers. Move up. 
Uh, might actually be worth popping my general into my Yuzo in order to win this quickly. Uh, it's usually a bit of a waste for our lights to fight with a general in charge, but I do want this group dead as soon as possible. So I think I will actually give them my general for this turn. Or past the rough ground, I remind you that that also means that we're past the protective uh, nature of the rough ground. Cavalry just starting to form up. I think my light cavalry will retreat to a flanking position. Oh goody, more fun with lights. Um, push up here. Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be some delay, so I'm not obligated to rush. It's probably safer to make a push from here. Actually, the way he's laid out it wouldn't be so bad if he overshot. It's probably a good chance to drive off his skirmishers. Okay. Push forward there next. Alright, not terrible. Be good if we caught one of them. No such luck. Okay. And yeah, that's not a bad move. Keep sending them this way. Because they'll eventually be able to help with the flanking battles here. Um... This is what I want to get into the middle, these uh, citizen hoplites, of these citizen hoplites. And, hmm. uh, right. I only, I only need a few units to get around the flank. Keep these guys as central reserves, keep them behind my phalanxes so that they can follow up in the event of any pushbacks. Actually, keep them close to my 3 or 4 eye because they may move up as well. can actually focus fire again on my three or four either way they've ended up which isn't good especially if I'm if I'm disrupted and then they move up that could cause me some problems it's nothing fatal yet but it's uh, not optimal play next turn now looking at this match we both picked superior warbands warband group unite and he's closing the hole in his line, although he might struggle to with the rough... Ah, oh, but he's coming forward. Yeah, that was never going to be pretty, was it? Clever. Alright. Lucky you have reserves. Oh, he's not going to push forward, which means I can't pull back safely. <coughs> and this melee is now in the way. Oh, come on, they're fighting with enormous courage. They can't pull back at all. Blast it. Because they're pinned in by this zone of control. They've got no line of retreat. I'm going to lose this unit soon. Say nothing of this debacle. Right, don't put anything in their place. Just, uh, that unit's going to have to come back. 
At least he's only got armored units to concentrate on now. Am I really going to have to bring in heavies to deal with this? I can't. I'm just going to end up losing two units in that situation. Let's see. Oops. One, two, three, one, two, three, and that's my cavalry blocked off, so it's going to come down to a frontal battle, I think. Well, I've got this unit making its way up towards the edge of the battlefield, so yeah, uh, just I'll hesitate a little bit longer, I suppose. And kill these blasters, these Onoi! You guys are going to get auto broken by fire, you might live a little bit longer if you charge. Oh no. Okay, let's see. That's fine, I can advance there and guard that square. That was very foolish of me to leave it open. Okay, next turn. Yeah, I should push the cavalry out a little bit before I end it. Alright, now it's next turn. Yeah, goodbye, slingers. Hardly knew ye. Oh goody, they're going to run all over the place and obstruct my line of advance again, aren't they? Hurry up and break those Uzonoi. We're going to be in trouble if this continues. That's not good. That's not good for him, I mean. I'm going to crush up against that line and they won't be able to do a thing about it. I need these guys out of the way. Okay. At least we should get the auto break soon. Because I'm going to lose these as own eye as well. That's right. So do I want to move up now? Ideally, I wanted all of these units out of the way first. Uh, can we have our... Who's in charge of this commit? Right. Can we have our general back, please? Ideally placed on this unit. Hmm. And uh, can we have our general back, please? We're about to need him, I think. Uh, although it's not, we're kind of too late.
If I get greedy for points, I'm just going to lose even worse. You guys put absolutely zero effort into that. All right then. We'll have to wait while he uh, sorts. His, he has a chance to sort his line out. Do I want to advance here? What will happen if I do? To be fair, he has nothing that will immediately threaten me. But that's le uh, that's leaving a big open line, especially since combat looks like it's going to be initiated here. I don't like breaking my line up. I suppose I do have a few. No, not really, because I don't have any reserves to make this make this favourable. I do have these units. As long as this unit remains in good order, my Pike Phalanx should be able to dispose of the veteran hoplites, but there's dangers to this because this is these guys are generaled up. They could possibly manage to get the better of this Pike Phalanx, and if they disrupt, it's all over. I am going to have to be patient. I think I'm going to borrow some troops from this flank. Hopefully this is the last time I'll need to. Next turn. Sorry, that's a bonus action. Maybe they'll come forward. I doubt it. Uh, that would be very unwelcome if we get into two on two against one. What I will do is something very subtle. I might be able to set up a flank. Possibly. Okay, now it's next turn. Making contact. Oh my god, I thought, I thought we were going to attack again. I see what he's hanging back so that... Uh, hmm, would have been better off attacking my uh, Izonoi again. Could have got the fragmentation and broken it by charging. He's generaled up here. That's a bad start. Now they're trapped. Why can they not withdraw? Because of these guys. Um, they need their general. Need to match from general for general here. This is all in the way. They won't stand the ground. And at least it lets me evacuate here. I suppose we may as well stay out for the moment. Um, that is extremely risky. But it might be a way to force the line forward. These units are moderately disordered. That's not a good look. The problem with charging is they could get forced back. And the veterans will have an advantage. On the other hand, it might let me open up the flank of these veteran hoplites.
chuck some spears at them. Good. If we can break the hoplites. And I do actually have enough for oh, enough troops for a sideways move. Hurry along. But yeah, never mind. Assuming we can evacuate these troops next turn, I can make a sh shuffle sideways and cover the flank. Not going to make it yet because I want to make it as one smooth move. And if we engage as my Uzonoi, then I can just uh, seal it up. Meanwhile, this should hopefully allow me to open a flank up. Yeah, I've got an idea. I wish they could borrow that general. Hmm. Well, hold on. Can this unit turn to face? Okay, turn that way. Because what I'm worried about is if I engage with this theory of 4 I here, or this veteran hop by here and trying to go for the flank, then uh, I'll need to be with this 3 of 4 I unit. Who's their general? Oh god, they're nowhere near. Of course they were that was a flank transfer. Maybe I can still do something next turn. Make sure that unit has the general. Because it's gonna be scary for my three or four I trying to engage veteran hoplites. And we're outnumbered here as well. Uh oh, how did I manage to go from this to being outnumbered? Locally. Let me think about that. This is telling a familiar, gloomily familiar story. Oh, why did I do that? What the hell am I thinking? How many times have I lured players into that same trap myself? I could not have done a worse job. I've thrown thrown them away because I didn't see that coming.
Okay. Trying to guarantee a flank attack here. I can block it anyway by moving there. Never mind. Oh, what have I done? This was so stupid and so preventable. Don't give them the general. Give them the general. They are gone. I threw them away. Okay, let's just try and move past that. God, what a stupid decision. In both of these games, I'm seeing some very extreme dice rolls. So, of course, it's a mirror match that you're probably not seeing right now, but we're getting some extraordinary results. I mean, a veteran unit breaking. I've had a number of freak accidents here. There was another game where I lost about 1% chance for my... Uh, For a unit of my mediums to break, to disrupt, they disrupted, and then they broke the. They had a double drop the next turn. So the luck. So the RNG seems to be in a particularly vindictive mood for both sides today. Well, that's lucky. Lucky they weren't pushed back f further. And uh, my flank exposed. But that could still happen. Um, okay, so the I oh, now we're up against the veteran hub lights. Let's just see what happens. Uh, that's extremely dangerous because what could happen is this veteran hub light unit will break. These superior warbands will pursue, they'll hit the veteran hoplites, turn their flanks, and they'll either expose themselves to these citizen hoplites or to the um, veteran hoplites. I have to try and stop that from happening. These units are in order. So, let's see what happens here. They break. We pursue. And just as I expected... And yup. Don't stuff this up. How was that? How was that? <laughs> I managed to block it. Now please don't have another freak result and fall back. Good. Okay then. This is going very this side is now going very well for me. Uh, it's going horribly in the other game, but it's going very well for me here. And uh Honestly, the, given how wild the luck has been in this game, I'll take it at this point. You guys are going up against pretty strong um, pretty strong uh, heavy foot, so you guys need the stability a general lends you. We'll finish mowing down these Ozonai. This could be better, couldn't it? Well, we should still grind them down as long as nothing goes wrong. Okay, hold on to your helmets when my Thorakitai break. 
they held firm. That was critical. Well, whatever way you swing it, it's going to be a two on one somewhere. But if he's too aggressive, he could open up a flank. He doesn't have any reserves here, though. I think I might just... Oh, I can't attack this turn. Okay, pray we don't lose here. Right. I could attack here, but what do I do when the enemy's veteran hoplites attack? So this is very dangerous. Here we're fine. I don't remember, it only takes one of these to have a freak result and things start chain turning again. Um, and remember, in terms of winning the tournament, I'm losing route percentage. No, they need to be cautious. Once this cavalry starts to try and outflank me, I need this horse on hand to flank his cavalry. Do we have an actual advantage here? No, these are just citizen hoplites. Uh, though we can get an advantage. Please don't lose an impact. See, well, at least they didn't disrupt. That could have been a lot worse. And now they can. Now at least they're free to maneuver somewhere else. They were kind of locked down before. Uh, the thing is, if you're winning, try not to start any more fights unless you're absolutely sure it's going to yield a win. Because the more dice you throw, the more likely it is for something to go wrong. If things are in your favor, keep it. Uh, keep things stable. If things aren't in your favor, you need to take more risks, even if they're on, even if they're on e even in, uh, terms. Because the more you throw that dice, the more likely you'll get a si something will come up to change the overall situation, and that's something to draw from this match. Don't take any risk you don't have to. Yeah, those war bands are amazing. Are doing amazing work for me here. Crunch and another general in battle. So anything could go wrong anywhere along the line now. Okay, a two and one advantage on me there, but that's opened a flank. That has opened a flank. He's gambling that my unit will break before um, I open a flank. More fighting. This time that's... Uh, that was incredibly unlucky. I feel for you there, Hyde. Uh, forget my earlier moaning in the last game. Uh, not good. That's always the danger of putting a general here. They'll push through the line. I have to hurry up here. Thankfully, with that unit moving on, I have, or this unit in danger, I have no reason not to engage now because I'm in danger whatever I do I may as well take the risk oh, those are not nice odds take uh, take the general we're better off advancing through his line at a slow pace anyway that should reinforce them take the actually take the worst chance first I don't want to get any worse due to casualties. Alright. And now I'll just take a side step back around. And the worst that's going to happen to this unit is it fragments. And other than that we're fine. And what's going to happen here? Okay. 
Nothing. Nothing. The drums of war continue. Nothing. <sighs> Nothing. And I should have resolved this first. Because they might disrupt. They might fragment now. Let's try and break through quickly here. Good, that's a fragmentation. Behind these units here. They're not pursuing anymore. Uh, let's be careful about this. Because he can charge as well. Let's give it a few turns. And, uh, and what am I thinking? This isn't a good idea, is it? Because uh, there's nothing stopping those members from Wait a little bit here. The fact that he's hesitating here works to my advantage. Next turn. No. Oh. There's not really much for the skirmishers to do. I guess I'll go and have a go at these guys. Okay, now it's next turn. Well, that will keep us distracted at least. And we're in skirmisher hell. Just as well I brought my own skirmishers up as it turns out. Where does he keep getting all of these guys from? Mm, no luck from there. And those uh, Fester and Hoplites will be getting worn down. Although we'll start losing ranks soon. So it's not entirely one-sided. Superior units don't usually break like that. Cripes. Oh. Let's make it quick. And now I do have a numerical superiority on this flank. Pick the square I go on to very carefully there. Take a general.
try and get them to dis well, what's more likely? Probably much for muchness. Um, try and get them to disrupt. That's a fragment. Oh my goodness. Well, luckily they help. I it's hardly lucky after all of this, but they managed to hold on. But the dice have been unusually vindictive this game, to say it, to put it lightly. And of course my unit holds farm. Uh, even here. Right. I f while I feel I adopted a good strategy for the battle, except for this nonsense over I don't know. This has been mostly decided by luck, honestly. Next turn. Those are just those hoplites are just being indecisive now. At this point, this is basically just a spectacle that's unfolding. I've never... I have been playing this game for years and I've never seen a player be this unlucky. Just roll after roll where he should get a break. See, so yeah, in a year and a, in, in, I don't, I think it's two years at this point. In two years of playing this game, I've never seen anything like this. And now that I've occupied those hoplites, I can attack here. I wonder if this unit's going to disrupt next. I'm surprisingly close there. Give him something, have a phalanx suddenly disrupt or something. That's game. That's the game over. Um, Right, I need to try to get as large a route percentage as possible here. If I can get him to double drop, then that's more points than up. Okay. So I wasn't that lucky.
I'm, I might pick up on two routes here. Yep. I, well, they were only mercenary hoplites that time, but still. Oh my god. Luckily, they ran a long way. There's honestly a kind of morbid curiosity at play here. I just, I'm kind of just trying to see how far the rabbit hole goes. I think that's a flank attack from the pursuit. Well, um, I think that's it. Uh, good game to my opponent. Well, oh, we just missed the flank attack. I'm still reeling from that. But we've won. And with a very healthy lead, that should set us in good store stead for the tournament. <sighs> okay, everyone. This has been Napoleon Complex. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.